Hi, you're listening to The Humans We Are with Carola, episode number 11. Hello, lovely human. What's going on? Around here, the human is adjusting to kids being back to school after summer break. It's an adjustment, figuring out schedules and such, but it's interesting to notice the duality, you know, the bittersweetness of finally having more quiet time, less interruptions, more opportunity to focus, and also missing the kids so much. By the way, if you're new here, welcome. First of all, I am so grateful for your attention, your time, and I promise to do my best to honor all of it and by offering my best here. Another thing that's going on, and I don't mean to make this about me, I'm just trying to share the ways in which I am also learning to witness the human that I am and learning to be in partnership with her and how that makes me um, have a more productive relationship with her. So one of the things that has helped lately is that I am doing physical therapy for my right shoulder. A few months back, I started having uh, pain when I reached out to the side and even putting on clothes, um, definitely at the gym. And without boring you with the details, of my particular injury, what's been really interesting to see is how years of unconscious use of my shoulder, and because I wasn't aware that I was moving it quote-unquote wrong, that created a neural pathway in my brain because the way that I was using it and moving it got automated. But because the wrong movement got automated, that caused more wear and tear and also pain so of course i am using the opportunity to retrain my my movements but the biggest aha for me has been this sudden awareness of how unconsciously and unintentionally i've been using this body and when i say unconsciously and unintentionally I I hope I don't sound too self-critical or like I'm beating myself up because that's not where I'm coming from. I'm coming from this newfound awareness and curiosity, almost like an awe, like a veil was lifted and now I can see where I was totally in the dark before in, in terms of how I was moving this shoulder. A big part of our being in the world is automated and that runs in our subconscious mind. And that's a beautiful thing because if if we didn't do that, we would be exhausted every day if we had to do consciously and intentionally every single thing that we do during the day. So it's a beautiful thing. If we've done something enough times or or a certain way enough times, our amazing brain creates a pathway that saves us a ton of energy when we need to use that thing again, that pattern again. And because we have that rat, that pathway, the efficient machine that our brain is will also try to use that same pattern or behavior whenever the situation is similar. So it keeps reinforcing itself. It's remarkable how the brain works and how how that has served us for years, both as individuals and also like humankind. So now I am learning how the way that I randomly learned to move my right shoulder, even though it was effective and therefore became efficient when it got automated, It wasn't the most correct one in terms of um, taking care of the machinery, the most protective one, if that makes sense. So how do we do that in other areas of life? How can we be creating problems that aren't visible yet, but might become visible? uh, Because we are 
doing things in the way that we just practice the most and therefore it became automated but it wasn't necessarily the best way to do the thing this ties in really beautifully with what i wanted to talk about today this episode is going to be a little more spiritual a little more out there if you will more woo if that's not your jam just keep it and come back next week But if you're here, I think you're somewhat spiritual. And even if this, what you're going to hear here, sounds a little too weird, just give us a chance and let it simmer in the back of your mind. It might make sense later. Just don't push it, okay? So, the humans we are. It's just a name that came to my mind coming out of the shower. I wanted to start recording that day. And I didn't want to overthink it, so I just went with it. I I thought if I need to, I can always change it later. And now, with more time, it's like I am understanding more and more why that was the name of the podcast, why I needed to use that name. So I want to talk today, and more at a general level, about the framework that I'm using in my coaching and also here in the podcast to create and teach the concepts that I use here. You may have heard the phrase that we are not human beings having a spiritual experience, but we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And this has been credited to different people, but I'm sure you've heard it before. I believe that too. I believe that we are spiritual beings that chose to come to this physical world, to the earth, to have uh, experiences as humans. Because as spirits, we can't have the range of experiences that we can as humans. In this episode, I'm going to focus on how this works and not so much on why we came here or we come here. As humans, we come into this life, into this world, without an instruction manual and though this is commonly said to new moms in regards to kids and taking care of them what i'm talking about now is that we don't have a manual to know how to be a human ourselves and luckily we don't really need one because humans learn mostly from imitation so we emulate those that are close to us our caretakers our parents whoever is close to us or those we admire or maybe just what we are exposed to and we also learn from our experiences and the reactions of others to us and our emotions play also a big role in how and what we learn as i'm sure you're aware by now amazing so technically we don't need an instruction manual we can have an amazing fulfilling productive life without having to do anything differently but if you do want to do things differently and i'm not saying that you should by the way but if you do if you do want to change something it could be useful to have a manual of sorts so that you can unlearn what you want to leave behind so that you can relearn how to do things in a new way and you can teach yourself how to find those new ways that align with you with who you want to be in other words how to know what you want to change what you want to replace that with and how to check if you are right in the direction that you wanted to change it and all of this works way better if you are not being mean to yourself all the time judging criticizing beating yourself up so that you can focus on how to be kind to yourself along this whole process i like to think that when we come to this world we partner with a human being our spirit our soul our higher self our true self however you might want to call it partners with a human being and we decide to have a go at this life together so we are a team there's the soul the higher self the name that whatever name you choose and there is the human being 
with her body, her mind, her emotions, and all the different parts or manifestations of her. She's bringing a lot to the alliance, to this partnership. This is a very rich and a potentially very fruitful partnership between you, your soul, and your human. This life is the only life where your soul is partnering with this human being. And on top of that, I personally believe that, and you may or may not believe the, the same thing, that you choose the human that you're going to partner with. And this human comes with some trauma. She may come with even ancestral trauma. And science is showing more and more that some trauma responses are passed down by genes. And all of that comes with your human, your human that you're partnering with. The soul, your higher self, that can't be damaged. That, that part of you, that soul, it doesn't have trauma. This way of thinking of myself has been truly a game changer for me. Thinking of myself as a spiritual being or a higher self that partners with a human being to live this life on earth has changed everything. And I'm, I want to give you some examples that to illustrate how it has changed things for me. So it's given me a deeper respect and even reverence for this body, which now is way harder for me to criticize and judge harshly in any way. It makes me be so grateful for this human body that partners with me. And it makes me want to take care of it, to serve it, to show it more respect. It also makes me more patient and compassionate when I notice patterns of thinking or behavior that this human has automated over the years, which have served me in some ways in the past. And if I want to change them now, that's all fine, but that doesn't justify or give me permission today to be a jerk to the human that I was before in the past, whether the past was five years ago, 20 years ago, five minutes ago. It also makes me really curious and it makes me really want to know myself as a human better. Who is this human? What does she like? What doesn't she like? What comes easy to her? What is hard? What, what does she thrive at? What shuts her off? It makes it more accessible to be curious and also to be gentle and kind with myself. It makes it easier to be kind when teaching myself something new, whether it's a new skill, a new behavior, a new way of thinking. If I notice that I am reverting back to the old patterns, or if I notice that it's been hard to rewire something, it makes it easier to understand and to be patient with that. It also makes my experiences of this human life more fun. It makes me want to be more present to all of it, even to the ones that might feel more challenging or more unpleasant or just hard or painful. It, it really makes me want to experience more of it. And it makes me want to get more in touch with emotions. It makes me want to really feel them and get to know them better. It makes me want to get more skilled at feeling. Because what I'm seeing is that emotions are like this bi-directional interface between the soul and the human being. They are what allows us to experience this life. Emotions are why we as spiritual beings decided to come have this life. And they are also what helps us steer the life. It, they are like a compass that tells us in which direction is something worth noticing. And they are also how we direct our human to what we want. The humans we are is my attempt to help you figure out all of this for yourself, to help you come up with your own map 
your instruction manual for your human. I hope adopting this perspective helps you develop a better relationship with your human. You know, my mission here is to help you get to know her better, to know this human you are, so that you can enjoy being her. So I hope that seeing your life as a human, as a partnership, helps you experience this life as a human to the fullest. The invitation for this week is to start noticing your human, start seeing her with curiosity and compassion. If you notice a habit that you're trying to break and you know that humans are made to automate what they repeat, you'll see it's not her fault if she's still doing something that you want her to change. That's how she's literally supposed to work. And that doesn't mean that you can't change it. Humans are very malleable but you need to practice the new behavior more than the old one. And frustration or getting mad at your human for, well, being a correctly functioning human being, it doesn't help move you in the right direction. So notice your human. If it feels accessible, try to see if she feels appreciated, if she feels uh, acknowledged. And if she doesn't, try to do it. Try to acknowledge her. Today, more than ever, I want to ask you to share this episode. Or another one, if you have another one that's your favorite. This is such an important message, though, that I feel compelled to share and to ask you to share it. But I can't reach as many people alone as I could with your help. I feel strongly that if more of us start seeing ourselves as in partnership with this human body, this human mind, all these human parts, we're going to relate to ourselves with more respect, with way more love, and that will change how we treat each other. And then that will change the world. So please help me reach more people. And the way that you can do that, the way that costs zero money and it takes a few minutes of your time is to share the podcast with someone you love and to leave a rating and review and an honest review. I, I'm not asking you to lie. Just give me an honest review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. That really helps. And I know you don't see how directly, but I've done the research and I, I truly believe that it helps that the, alg the algorithms are going to show this podcast to more people. And if you want to apply this to your own growth, to your own journey, these tools, these concepts, I do have spots available for one-on-one -on -one coaching. So just reach out to carolafuertes at gmail.com or you can also find a link in my bio on Instagram where I am at Fuertes Carola to set up a conversation to just fill it out to see if we have um, good chemistry, if there's a good fit and we can take it from there. Okay, that's all for now. I'll be back next week. And in the meantime, please love your human. That's all my lovely human friends. Bye-bye.